Hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have Catherine Slane at the Royal Ascot, plus the Wall Street Journal roasting the Montecito duo, plus one ultra famous singer that snubbed the Duchess of Sausages podcast. But first, I'm pleased to announce that we are arriving at the one year anniversary of the Royal Rogue. This was the first live stream that I did on June 25th of last year, 2022. You know that I was just the battle language guy back then. You wanted so much content from the royals and non-royals. So I created this channel originally to just live stream once or twice a week so everybody could get the royal soap opera fix. 30 million views and 137 royal rogues later, it has been nothing short of crazy. And you know how much I enjoy making these shows for you. I still haven't decided if I'm going to do a live stream tomorrow to celebrate this anniversary. I'm still sorting out technical issues, but I will be letting you know beforehand. And the Royal Rose official monogram is coming in some great merch that will be available soon. And I can tell you, embroider looks awesome. But let's get down to it with a sight to behold, Catherine at the Royal Ascot. By the way, this picture was shared by according to Taz, and I agree that this is just awesome. The splash of color is everything. They arrived together with uh, Princess Beatrice, who looked wonderful as well, and Edo, who in my opinion is a very elegant man. And you know that elegance is the way you wear your suit or your dress. It's not the dress that, or the suit that makes you, but the other way around. And I absolutely loved this picture of the king and the queen, especially for the colors. This is impeccable taste. I need a tie like that one. I don't have pale pink ones. Sophie was amazing too, and I couldn't leave Zara and Mike Tyndall out. I know that this was over a couple of days and they were different attires, so maybe I will be commenting them on my next show. And many thanks to Lady B of Belsize Official who compilated all of Catherine's dresses at Ascot. Yeah, everyone just noticed it. We got a series of white and light colors for four years and all of a sudden the most dread you can wear in the most stunning way. What do you think made Catherine change this much? There must be some kind of theory behind this. And we just found out that Taylor Swift snubbed the Duchess of Sausages on her Arse Wives podcast. It is alleged that Meghan wrote a personal letter to Taylor Swift asking her to appear on Arse Wives, but that the singer declined through a representative. Oh, you can imagine that Meghan went full calligraphy on the request and, well, Taylor replied pretty much like Meghan and Harry thanking the gift of a bike for Archie a couple weeks ago through our representative. How dare you be so cruel and impersonal with the Duchess of Sausages? But uh, the reference comes from a Wall Street Journal article that pulled no punches with the headline. Harry and Meghan produced a Hollywood flop themselves. And what's interesting is that it actually describes how it is to work with the articles. I'm going to spare you the fluff and so many details that we already know and jump straight into the tenderloin of the text. Take a look at this. Archwell employees and associates say the company often lacks direction and that its founders at times seem surprised by the work required to finish entertainment projects. Most potential initiatives, they said, follow a similar route. Big idea, subpar execution. This is what most people do not realize about creating content. There are so many details that you need to pay attention to, like trying to sculpt and polish a diamond little by little, and every small detail requires planning, execution, and testing. Especially because everything nowadays is about you as a person. That's why you like watching my shows. Maybe you like my style or my delivery, but what matters is that this is me, a person. And you can surround yourself with the best producers, assistants, even artificial intelligence tools, but they cannot replace you. And you need to make sure that the final product conveys your personality or at least the persona you are playing. And that takes a ton of work. People who worked 
with the pair say their Sussex upon Sunset outpost was undermined by their inexperience as producers and trouble finding material consistent with their brand. My question is, what is their brand? Meghan has shed her skin so many times that we lost count, and as for Harry, I insist, I think he doesn't want a brand or anything. The guy is simply not into it. And this is something that exposes who really was producing this stuff. Megan would often ask for changes late in the editing process, at times recruiting senior Spotify executives, including then-chief content officer Don Ostroff, to call producers and push them to make changes. Well, I thought that it was Ars Smell Audio, the ones producing the podcast, but according to this, we confirmed that it was Spotify producing it. Remember that one thing is producing the show, like actually making it, and another is distributing it. It's like I produce my show and then I distribute it through YouTube. So Megan was demanding late in the editing process to make changes. No wonder these people got fed up of the Z-list actress turned Duchess bullying, I mean, giving them orders. And talking about Taylor Swift, thanks to Royal Wales, Cambridge Power on Twitter, we got this blast from the past. In a Christmas episode of Apple Fitness Plus, Time to Walk series, Prince William recalled a charity event when he met Taylor Swift. I sat down to watch John Bon Jovi to do his performance, and I thought, that's it. My job is done. I'll get a dinner in a minute, and I might be able to have a chat to some people. And you know, I'm off duty a little bit now. Little did I think that what was going to happen next. I'm sat next to Taylor Swift. She's on my left, and after John does his first song, there's a pause, and she turns to me, she puts her hand on my arm, looks me in the eye, and says, Come on, William, let's go and sing. To this day, I still do not know what came over me. Honestly, even now I'm cringing at what happened next, and I don't understand why I gave in, but frankly, if Taylor Swift looks you in the eye, touches your arm, and says, Come with me, I got up like a puppy and went, yeah, okay, that seems like a great idea. I'll follow you. I cannot get enough of these stories, and I say it being a big John Bon Jovi fan, it's complicated to define who was more starstruck here, but it's fun, and best of all is the spontaneity of the moment which makes it so great. Just like my own spontaneity going to my crazy tools to come up with how would William look if he was on tour. My royal rogues, I will keep you updated with the latest royal news and memes and all you have to do is just click the like and subscribe buttons. It's that simple and free. And that's how you can inspire me to make more daily videos. The two most important words, much love and bliss.